Okay, so long-time subscribers of my channel will know that I generally use my Pi 4 8 gig with a 52 Pi ice tower cooler, and it is excellent. I love the fact that it can be silent cooling, uh, but it also works well with a fan as well. Uh, well, there is another ice tower. Uh, well, this is Ice Cube Tower Cooler from Sun Founder. Uh, they sent me a monitor recently, which was really nice, and I've got another package from them, which I've ordered something else to, to make a video with, but it's a pretty exciting product as well. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. Turns out there's quite a bit inside the box. So I've got a secondary fan here. Uh, obviously these are all to be able to mount the cooler on. Uh, I've got a couple of sheets of Perspex it looks like there. Screwdriver, spanner, loads of thermal pads, uh, which is interesting. A load of screws, bolts, and uh, some standoffs as well. This is the actual main unit, and as you can see, it's got uh, what looks like an LED fan, I'm guessing, because it's see-through. But the part on the bottom that looks like it touches the Pi uh, is quite big. Um, so it looks like it's going to touch some other components, so that will be interesting to see how well that performs. So back to the 52 Pi Ice Tower Cooler. Uh, it only really connects to the CPU stroke GPU on the Pi. And uh, you can see the, the bottom point here, so it isn't actually spanning over any other components does work brilliantly and I do love the 52 Pi Ice Tower cooler um, but uh, yeah that's that's the only bit that it makes contact with obviously the fan will also add cooling as well um, but I tend to use this without a fan because I really do like silent cooling now we have a look at this story from Tom's Hardware from 2019 so a while ago but it's got some heat maps of the Pi 4 uh, now the first heat map is less relevant where is it this one here because this is before the update and we can see that a lot of the board got hot. So the CPU, GPU here, uh, this is the RAM, was getting very hot. Uh, this is where the power comes in, so the USB-C socket, so this is gonna be a hot area anyway. This is Wi-Fi, this cube here. Uh, and this very hot bit here uh, is the USB controller. But also sometimes people talk about the Ethernet controller getting hot, but obviously you can see where in that picture, there is no cable in the ethernet, so I guess they weren't using it. I don't know how hot it gets when you are using uh, a fast data rate over ethernet. But with the firmware update, and this happened ages ago, so your Pi will have this pretty much, uh, you can see that there's still, where the power comes in, it's still getting hot, uh, but it's really just the CPU and GPU. Uh, there is a tiny bit of heat here in the USB controller, but obviously the new firmware made a big difference, and it's nowhere near as bad as it was. But looking at what the ice cube covers, uh, so it covers the CPU, GPU, it covers the RAM, uh, it covers the Ethernet controller, and it also covers the USB. So as we can see from this, it does cover quite a wide area. So it basically goes over here. Uh, you can see that it's definitely going over those components. It's actually shaped to do so. Anyway, let's build it up. So it was one acrylic plate, not two, that I said earlier on. Quite a thick one. So attach these four standoffs. And then pop the pie on top of those, like so. Pop these on top to keep it in place. So I've got to screw these two adapters onto the base. Yeah, that's on. Pop the thermal pads on. It looks like I've got a spare because there's two of each. Uh, these are much thicker than the one that goes on the CPU, GPU. There you go, that's the pads on. And then we're just popping it on the top. There you go, that's made connection. Pop these on to lock everything in place. And not that you can see much in there, you can see the, the green pad, the thicker pad, and you can see the CPU. Uh, we can see it on the CPU GPU here, and we can see it through this side as well. Now the book talks about connecting it to the five volt. I reckon you could definitely get away with connecting it to the three volt, but I'll connect it to the five volt because that's what they specify. Here you go, so you can see the two pins on here. I wish they did it like the WaveShare board, which shows you, uh, so the two red are five volt, you can see the black is ground, and then the yellow is the 3.3. So if I wanted to have this fan running at 3.3, I would move it back to that yellow one on the corner. It just means that it's considerably quiet on 3.3 volt, but I haven't started this up yet, so I don't really know how loud it's gonna be. So I've got some of these spare, which uh, I haven't got mentioned in the little guide that I've got. There's two of those, which are the same as what mounts the fan to the heatsink. Oh, and I've got a bit of uh, thermal pad there, which is uh, I'm gonna need to get out. Okay, so I need to shut down my eight gig Pi and start up this four gig Pi. 
and have a look. So let's close all this down, control alt delete and shut down. Let's switch all the ones I need to over. One thing I would change is uh, on the base of this, you've just got the screw heads. And so if it's on a desk, you could end up scratching a desk. You're much better off to have some rubber feet like on the DeSalvo cases and loads of other cases come with rubber feet. It's definitely a lot nicer to use. So let's switch on and see what happens. Oh, there we go. So nice LED lights. Let's see if I can get it a bit darker in here. Yeah, it looks very nice and you can see the LED slowly changes colour. And the fan is surprisingly quiet if I put my microphone right in front of it. I don't know how much it's going to pick up, but it's pretty quiet on 5 volt. Okay, so let's have a look at the temperature. So if I use P-Sensor to have a look at that. So we're a very cool 30 degrees at the moment. Let's start playing a bit of YouTube and see what happens. Okay, so we're playing at 1080 and uh, what's the temperature at? 35 degrees, maximum of 37 so far. Yeah, it looks like it's not going any higher than 37, so that's decent. And what's my overclock? So control alt T, pseudo nano boot config.txt. And let's have a look at what I'm at. So 2147 I'm at at the moment. Okay, so I've left it playing some YouTube and played around with it and it still hasn't gone above 37, which is decent. Uh, so let's have a look at the Stressberry GitHub and let's scroll down and install Stressberry. Sudo apt install stress. Okay, so I've restarted. Uh, so that's why the max temperature only says 33 because I haven't really done anything on this yet. And let's run Stressberry. So awaiting stable baseline temperature. Let's see if this goes up, still on 33. Okay, so preparing to stress. It's found the temperature, uh, so around about 29 degrees. So now it's up in the clock speed. You can see the temperature's ramping up. 38 degrees, still the fan is super quiet, 40 degrees. So the max that we've had is 42 degrees so far. Okay, so the nice thing about this P-Sensor is it's telling me that the max temperature is 44 degrees and uh, I don't have to check through all the results and everything, but uh, yeah, that, that stayed nice and cool. So I think now I'm probably gonna do the same test, but I'm gonna do it with the fan connected to 3.3 volt. So I need to move this GPIO pin just back one uh, to the back layer. Uh, don't do this when your Pi is on. Let's plug that back in. So that is now running at the lower speed. Yeah, and I can see the lights come on as well. So we can see from this diagram on big mess of wires uh, that uh, these two are five volt and this one is ground. So I'm using this ground one and I've moved it from this five volt one to this 3.3 volt one. So I'm using this pin and this pin. And that's not a Raspberry Pi 4, it is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B version 1.2, you can see by the full size HDMI socket. So let's run that same test again. Uh, so at the moment it says 44 is the max, uh, but it's gonna go higher obviously because I'm gonna use 3.3 volt. Uh, so run the same test and let's go. And it is very, very quiet now. So it was quiet before, I don't, think, I'm, I don't think I'm actually conscious that it's on and it's pretty quiet in here. I can hear birds chirping outside, but it's pretty quiet in here. And uh, yeah, I'm not really conscious that it's on. So let's see how well this works. So the baseline temperature is already slightly higher, but that's to be expected. Plus the pie's been on for longer. So the interesting thing will be how high it gets. So already up to 41. Let's see how quick it can beat the 5.5 volt fan. We're nearly there, 43.3, or oh, it's dipped down a little bit, 42.3. Yeah, 45.7. Still a very low temperature, so still nothing to worry about. And interestingly, p sensors come up with 47, and I don't think I've seen 47 on there. I suppose it could be rounding up. No, it's only 46.2, 46.7, so I guess it's rounding up from that. So you can see now it idles for 30 seconds, so current temperature 42.3, but it's dropping. 37.4, dropping pretty rapidly. Okay, so 48 degrees was the max, so really happy with that. So I definitely would use this at 3.3 volts. But what's gonna happen when I unplug the fan all together? So let's unplug that. Again, probably better to do this with your Pi switched off. And I would most likely get even better cooling if I detach the fan completely, but I'm leaving the fan attached to the heatsink, uh, but it's not plugged in, so this is completely silent cooling. So let's do the test again.
So 48 so far is the maximum temperature we've gone to. Okay, so it's ramping up again, 45 degrees, uh, but we're still not as hot as we had it before. So 48 is the highest that it's been, but it's gonna get there pretty quick, I would think. Okay, so it's all done, and 54 degrees is the max temperature we got to, which is absolutely nothing to worry about. The Raspberry Pi throttles itself at 80 degrees, so we're getting nowhere near that. So thanks to Sun Founder for sending me this excellent cooler. Uh, I'm really happy with it. You might have noticed in the video earlier on, I had it on top of this braided USB-C cable. And that's because when the fan was running at 5.5 volt, if I knocked it, occasionally it would create a vibration. So it definitely should have some little rubber feet on it, something to isolate it. But apart from that, it is excellent. Really, really pleased with it. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.